in location. The psalmist says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Hallelujah. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise today. We declare that you are an awesome God and we are your people. We come, oh God, today to worship you, to lift up our hands, our hearts, and our voices and declare, yes, God, you are awesome. You have done marvelous things. Your faithfulness, oh God, is from generation to generation. We thank you, Lord God, that you have never left us, never failed us, that, Lord God, you have provided everything that we need. And so, Lord, we worship you today. And our prayer is, oh God, that you would be pleased with our praise, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils, oh God. That, Lord God, you would look favorably on us today and establish the work of our hands. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that we are able to come together as a family and praise and worship you, O oh Lord. And so we submit ourselves to you and invite you, O oh God. Yea, Lord, we invoke your holy name and say, have your way in us and through us, O oh Lord. Move from heart to heart and mind to mind, O oh God. Help us to fix our focus on you. Hallelujah, Lord that we might give you, O oh Lord, our unending praise and declare to the whole world that you are God. You are awesome, Lord, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Amen.
I do want to remind you that um, the government is rolling out information on vaccines and their availability. And so I just want to encourage you to uh, go to the government website on the uh, Nobel coronavirus. Um, I've sent it to you a few times in email, um, but you can just type in Nobel coronavirus or coronavirus Nova Scotia or something like that and it will come up with the information um, on vaccines. There was a public forum on Friday uh, that talked about it a bit in terms of how the uh, country of Canada is acquiring vaccines and they are trying to get them all. Um, and so uh, they've now said that people who are 50 to 64, I think, can receive vaccines. You have to make an appointment, et cetera. But um, just check it out. How, how many folks in the house have been vaccinated already? At least once. Amen. 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 All right. Bless God. And so we just want to make sure that that happens. I'm also uh, so pleased to, uh, to tell you that I had a video visit with uh, Sister Barbara Bowles. Uh, we miss Sister Barbara. And uh, so I was so pleased to be able to talk with her via video chat. And uh, she is doing well and wants to say to the church that she loves you, she misses you, and uh, just keep her in your prayer. She's been doing quite well. She's been fully vaccinated, and uh, she's never tested positive for COVID either. So uh, we bless God for that, and uh, I extend her, her wishes, her good wishes to you. Please remember all of these who, we don't see them, but you know, they are members of our family and we want to keep in contact with them and especially ones who don't have any family here. Um, you know, we, we especially want to, to keep our arms around, so please keep them in your prayers. When we come to prayer time, we have a few more prayer uh, points for you, but right now I'm just going to ask you to uh, bless the Lord with your gifts this morning. Please prepare yourselves to bring an offering to the Lord, remembering that giving is a part of our worship. And we give to God our very best gift whenever we can. Deacon Thane is going to come with the prayer. Uh, just before I pray, there is another quick announcement that uh, there was some money that was found outside of front. Um, and so if anybody did lose any money recently, uh, just let us know. And now I'll just uh, put a prayer for the offering. Our gracious and everlasting Lord, once again, we just thank you that you have provided for us through another week. We just, uh, just thank you and, and bless you for everything that you do for us day by day. We just give back a portion that you so willfully give to us. Just bless the hands that are able to give and those that are unable to give at this time. May we use this for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. All the things we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
just a little closer what we did. God left inspired people a word for us to be able to follow in this life. I'm going to be reading from Philippians 4 a Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, you want us to think on those words that I just proclaimed to us today. And the choir just said, just a little closer walk with him. We cannot do those things on our own strength. It's when we hide his word in our heart. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we come this morning, this afternoon, just to give you thanks for the air we breathe, roof over our head and close on our back. We look into our words today. We do know there are people less fortunate than ourselves. Lord Jesus, you inspire people to write this word that I just read. Help us, our Father, to be very conscious of this. Help us, our Father, to follow the footstep of your Son, Jesus Christ. It's only by this that those dying world will know that we will walk, will learn from your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we want you to go into the corridor in the hospital. The doctors, the pharmacy, even the cleaners, the technician, those who work, you know, to help the patient in hospital. We pray, our Father, that you might guide them, that they might follow your direction, so that they don't take ways means of their own, that in all their way, they might be able to acknowledge you, knowing they're going to stand before you one day and give an account <coughs> of what they've done in this life. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you for this sanctuary that we're worshiping this morning. This is a place that was set aside <coughs> for those who believe in your son Jesus Christ to assemble together to come and give you thanks for all that you've done for us. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our civic leaders, our new premier, our prime minister, even the president of the United States, who try to do the best they know how. We pray, our Father, you know, that you might guide their mind, their thoughts, and those people that surround them, who give them the advice how to be able to govern your people in this life, knowing that they're going to stand before you one day and give an account how they deliberate, how you guide them, how they do what you told them to do that they didn't take ways means of their own. Our Father and our God, we will never
never forgot to pray for our church here in New Horizon Baptist Church. You know all about us better than we even know of ourselves. Help us, our Father, to remain faithful, knowing that if we remain faithful, you are just, you know, to give what you would pray for. We pray for the under shepherd of this church. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you might be able to grant her the wisdom that she needs, you know, to be able to lead your people in this part of your vineyard. We do pray, our Father, for our choir, our choir director, the deacons, the officers of this church. Help us, our Father, to help us to be discerning, you know, to do what is right in your sight, that we might be able to apply your teaching in our lives. That when we go out there, even they don't even open the Bible, <laughs> they might be able to read our lives, knowing, you know, that we have learned the teaching that your son Jesus can learn with us. They might be able to come and ask us, what happened? We know what you had before. We might be able to tell them that we learn from your son. Help us, our Father. Forgive us of our sins. I will never forget to pray for those who are less fortunate than ourselves in this life. Help us, our Father. Yes, there are poor among us, which I was poor myself. But it's only because of your grace and your mercy that you know my name and you shepherd me up to this point in my life. Help us, our Father, that I'm very conscious of the technology, of the medium, of the video, that I look back all the videos that I've done over the years, that I've seen those who already called home. Same thing that I said to myself. My life going to be played back for me one day. Help us, our Father, that I may remain faithful to you. <clears throat> help me, help each and every one of us to remain faithful for your goodness and your mercy. We ask all of this for the forgiveness of our sins in the wonderful name of your son Jesus Christ. Amen. of the gospel, our associate pastor of youth and family, the Reverend Grace Skier, who's going to come and bring us a word today. Let's receive her with joy. Hallelujah. As she comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> While she is coming, we're going to just uh, to pray. Amen. I was thinking about, you know, how we always have the song. 
<laughs> Bless God. Lord God, we just give you thanks and praise for your servant today. As we stretch out our hands to her, oh Lord, we ask you, oh God, just to bring forth the word. Hallelujah. As you have given it to her, let her give it to us. We pray, Lord God, that you would fill her new now with your Holy Spirit. Anoint her, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, and use her mightily to your glory. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, good morning, church. Morning. And the scripture reading comes this morning from John 2. It's a familiar passage. It's a familiar passage. It comes from John 2. And I'm reading verses 12 to 22. Verses 13 to 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip of cords and drove out all from the temple courts. Both sheep and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he spoke of was his body and he was raised from the dead. His disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and, what, and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Dr. Britton, Officers of New Horizons Baptist Church, thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I give all thanks, of course, to God. I've chosen this text this morning, like I said, it's one that is familiar to all of us, but I hope that the Lord will give us something new from this passage uh, to think about. Before I begin, let us pray. Father, I thank you again for... Uh, for the anointing that has been on, that is on me, that you have allowed me this privilege to speak to your people this morning. First, I ask, Lord, that uh, this word would apply to myself and then to the hearers. Give them open hearts, uh, receptive hearts, Lord, and I claim your promise that your word would um, not return void, but would accomplish the purpose for which it has been set, sent. I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I need to settle down because, you know, I'm not up here every week, so the thing is, I get a little nervous. But you pray with me as I go through this morning, all right? Amen. Thank you for that. So I've, I've tagged tag this text, uh, Spring Cleaning with Jesus. <laughs> Lent is from um, an old English word called lectern, and the meaning is spring. So the beginning of uh, the lengthening of days after the winter is over. For most of us, spring and cleaning go together, like apple pie and ice cream. It's time for serious cleaning. Not just dusting and tidying, but the heavy duty stuff, you know, the baseboards, cleaning windows and curtains and blinds and mats, things, rugs, things I don't like to do. Um, and a whole lot of other heavy duty uh, tasks but thankfully I have help, and I hope you do too, because spring cleaning is a, can be a heavy duty. And we might not like or accept the washing and the polishing and the purging, but we like the result, don't we? Yes, it always feels very good. 
And not to mention Oakside with dead leaves and there's broken branches and all kinds of debris. But what is beautiful though is what is possible uh, when we remove the debris and nourish what is underneath the new growth. In today's passage, Jesus does some spring cleaning. On his way to Jerusalem to the Passover, and you remember the Passover is a major Jewish holiday um, which takes place in the spring. Um, you know also that uh, the celebration of the Lord's, it is the celebration of the Lord's protection um, over the Israelites and when they uh, exited from Egypt. Do you remember that? Yes, when the death angel passed over their homes, when they when he saw the blood of their uh, sacrificial lambs on the doorposts. So as Jesus and his disciples enter into Jerusalem um, and the uh, court of the Gentiles, this is the older part of the temple, where there's hundreds and thousands of pilgrims that have, been, have arrived there. It's kind of a stinky place and it's noisy and all of that. It's not any place of probably the comfort that we're in and worship that we'd be very comfortable in today. But nevertheless, this is where Jesus was. And he encounters what the money changers, you recall that as well? They were exchanging money in order to buy the sacrifices. Um, but the temple was meant to be a sacred place for the people to come closer to God. But the Jewish leaders were using it to make a profit and a gain. You remember that story? You, we, know, we know that story well. Jesus, though, is rightly angered. It's called righteous anger. Why is he angry? He's angry because this post of prayer is being as a, used as a place of merchandising. Yes, when you are angry over injustice, that's all right. That's called righteous anger. And that's not to be confused with, you know, anger that's misplaced. Which, you know, the Bible says to us um, not to be confused with that anger that is... Um, when the Bible says, be angry but do not sin, that's, that's when you're, you know, you're just taking your own emotions and, and that sort of thing into play, comes into play. So you know Jesus made a whip of cords and he drove the money, money changers out because of the injustices that were occurring there. There was, though, a need to purchase the animals. We know that for the sacrificing. And so because people were traveling from where? All over the place, from Egypt, from Rome, and far away places, and they were supposed to be bringing these sacrificial animals, um, spotless animals, to be sacrificed in atonement for their sins. So it was reasonable, was it not? Yes. And so the sellers, they tried to defend their position, claiming that, and also, that the money was going to be used for some good. They said, oh, this money is going to be used for the upbuilding of the temple. So they rationalized their behavior by saying it's going to be used for good, for the temple. And we might hear the same today. True? Yep. It is, if it's for God, it must be good. It must be all right. But we always have to wonder, does it interfere with God's purposes? They were cheating the people and doing it in the house of God, and they were also interfering with the worship. Because the way that the court was divided, um, there was a place for the Gentiles, a place for the Jews, a place for the men, a place for the women, and the priests were in a whole different place. And uh, where the Gentiles and where the money changers were, it was interfering with the Gentiles. They would never get to worship the, worship the Lord because there was so much activity going on. Sound familiar? Sometimes too much activity going on. To, it interferes with our worship. Okay, now stay with me. Now, uh, the t uh, this is about cleansing, right? Now, the timing of Jesus' cleansing of the temple is significant because it's leading up to the Passover. And during this time, Jews were to cleanse their homes of all the leaven products. Now, we stop eating all our sweets and sort of things. We, we fast for Lent. But well, the Jewish people would get rid of all the leaven, leaven uh, products in their home. And that also goes back to when they escaped from Egypt in haste. Remember, they didn't have time to wait for the dough to rise because they just took their unleavened bread and off they went. And so the Jews would actually uh, scour, clear their homes of anything that had leaven to remove any place, traces of leaven because they, this time of cleansing their homes for them was a time of preparation when they not only physically prepared, but they also spiritually prepared. And that's a lesson for us. We all get ready 
uh, for church physically, but we also need to get ready spiritually. We enter into worship as a time to pray, and I can actually say I felt the choir was in that spirit of praise this morning. I bless you for that. Thank you, bless the Lord. So we come into the host of the Lord physically prepared, but also spiritually prepared. This cleansing was a time of inner reflection and repentance, so they could more fully enjoy the joyous festival of the Passover. So as hundreds of thousands of Jews were cleansing uh, their homes of impurity, Jesus cleanses the temple of corruption. He was angry because, as again I said, it interfered with true worship. All of this buying and selling and uh, the noise took place, and again, um, in a structure that was meant for worship. But before we pass judgment, as I mentioned, we must also consider the condition of our hearts when we enter into worship. In terms of our worship, what are our minds focused on? I feel like you're all actually listening today. I bless the Lord for that. <laughs> are we fully and mentally present as, as well as physically? Because you know we can often get distracted. We can come into the house of worship with all kinds of things on our hearts and minds. And that's not what God wants. He wants us to leave it at the door, come in, and to worship him, enter into his presence, that we might encounter him. To be fully present is not to be just showing up either, putting our offerings on the plate. We come, like I said, with our hearts open and mind and willing so that our hearts might be changed. We can't come in holding on to things um, against, towards that we can't have against other Christians rightly or wrongly, family members, or anyone else, and then uh, come into God's house. Because if we do, God's house just becomes a place where we just come and hang out. We haven't come to be transformed. Amen. These are motions of worship, not true worship. And I'm speaking to me as well. Those words spoke to me. True worshipers, which everyone here, I know that's what your aim is to be, get each one of us, come to encounter God, to lose to lose ourselves in wonder, to lose ourselves in love of each other, to lose ourselves in praise of a holy God. Amen. While we no longer worship in temples and we no longer offer, offer animal sacrifices, Jesus' respect for the temple, his Father's house, shows us how we should respect the temple where he now lives. Where does he live? Within. He lives in us because of the sacrificial death. So why, if we have the Holy Spirit, Jesus living in us, do we need to be cleansed? Well, just like little did the Jews know that this man who was cleansing the temple would be their source of deliverance, we have the same expectation and promise that Jesus will not only live in us, but will transform us by his Spirit. As the Jews um, were commanded to cleanse their homes and Jesus cleansed the temple, so too should we um, cleanse, our temples be cleansed. This is what we are taught in scripture. Don't you know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? That's in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All right. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. All right. So again, why then, if we have Holy Spirit living in us, is there a need for us to have a spring cleaning? In the same way we accumulate clutter in our homes and the debris and the dead branches and leaves that gather after a long winter season, as it covers and stifles what is beneath, removing the debris makes room for new growth. So we have an accumulation. In our lives, clutter accumulates over time. We have false idols, things that occupy God's proper place in our lives. They sneak, they sneak in very, very slowly. Yes. After a long winter in the environment that we've been in, we have been in challenging, and more so if we have not been in prayer. Right, church? If we have not been in prayer. Old habits, old hurts, animosities, anger, mistakes, and missteps can keep us bound and going round and round. 
Through prayer, confession, we, had, we talked about confession last week, confession, we acknowledge and ask forgiveness of those things that are not pleasing to God, but also that have taken his place in our lives, first place, and prevented us from drawing closer and closer to him. Sometimes our schedules are so full, there is not time for prayer. Can anyone relate? We need to be, make time for prayer. We need to make time to be in communion with God. We need to be a praying church. We have a process in progress right now that needs to be saturated with prayer. But our preoccupation with the things of this world and our own desires are nothing more than distractions. Activities that keep us from serving others are also distractions. Lent is a time to clean out the debris in our lives and make room for new growth, for a new relationship with Jesus, for a growing relationship with our Father. I can see my little crocuses popping up all over the place. All I have to do is move a little debris, <laughs> cleanse, do a little cleaning, clean up some of that stuff that accumulated over the winter. It's a beautiful sight. Lent is a season of cleansing away the dirt and the clutter that accumulated so that we can be more also of who we were created to be. Sometimes we focus so much, of, though, on what we give up for Lent than we do on what the purpose of Lent is. And I don't know if you know this already, but I just learned this, actually, that the three pillars of Lent, because we think we pray, we confess, and all that, the three pillars of Lent are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. It's not about, you know, what food you can give up. And so that's justice towards God, being faint giving time to him, justice towards ourselves and praying and communing with him, and also justice towards our neighbor, good deeds towards others, looking out for others as well as ourselves. So we should take an inventory of the unhealthy things in our lives, the sin, the brokenness, the self-absorption um, that interfere with our relationship with God and with each other and make a change. After all, Lent is a season of reflection, repentance, and also a time of renewal. And if you think you don't have any blind spots, well, ask your spouse. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. We all have blind spots. And we cannot do always do what is right in our own eyes. Think about the money changers. They thought it was okay. We cannot do what is right in our own eyes. Our response should be not to defend, but work on self and ask God for help. The songwriter said, take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Yes, we were created in love and for love, but something in us makes us miss the mark, and we all know what that is, our sinful nature. Sin must be confessed to be forgiven, not just our private sins either, we should also confess our corporate sins. So we should be praying on behalf of the body to then con confess the sins of the body. Remember in the Old Testament, the Saint uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, he was praying uh, before he began the building, the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. He said he was praying to God for the sins of his sons, just in case they had sinned. That's a covering. So we should be praying for one another, for our body, for this body to do this in the same way, just in case there's any sin, so that God would hear and answer our prayers. The enemy wants to control your life and mine. Keep you covered in sin, unbelief, and disobedience. But Jesus died to, to die to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's be clear. Lent is not a season of guilt, but a time to examine ourselves, name what we see, not to accuse, but to release it to God and to be cleansed. We confess our sin, sins in the presence of God who loves us and waits for us us, his people, to come to him. 
And when we confess our sins to one another, the goal should be forgiveness, reconciliation, and the result, renewal. It's not to be, I'm right. It's reconciliation, forgiveness, and renewal. And as I go towards the end of the message here, we understand that the people went to the temple uh, to offer sacrifices, to seek forgiveness, to repent of the sins. Is why we come out. The temple was where people went to be near God, to encounter God. The temple was God's dwelling place. So when Jesus said, destroy this temple, and I will raise it up in three days, that was quite shocking to the people. This was a sacred place. But we also know that he was referring to himself. Only the perfect son of God who knew he was going to die and rise again victorious to conquer sin, death, and the grave can redeem and cleanse us. So in spring, we clean, we fertilize, we may even plant a few new seeds. But maintenance over the coming months is ongoing. We're still going to need to water, pull up some weeds, uh, do some pruning. What else would gardeners do up there? Uh, fertilize, aerate, all those some things that I know about don't do, but anyway. <laughs> There's someone to do it. Nevertheless, spring is a time of preparation, which necessarily involves some paring back, cleansing, um, and, but it also requires ongoing attention, diligence, and discipline, which will determine the future growth. There's a song that says, what does the one of our songs we sing? Come for a cleansing. Come for a cleansing. I don't know all the words, I haven't got a hymnal. <laughs> Come to a cleansing to Calvary. Je yes, Jesus is, just as Jesus cleansed the ancient temple, um, it is only through him that we can be cleansed as we repent of our sins and receive him in our hearts. Only once we are made clean through his sacrifice and submission to his power will we enjoy the perfect deliverance from what keeps us stuck, from what holds us captive, captive and what keeps us from living as lights in the dark world through Christ our Passover lamb. As we strip away the debris, more of his light can shine from us. I'll end with this. There's a wonderful hymn, Come for a Cleansing. Come for a Cleansing. Will we come to the Lord for a cleansing? If we've not accepting, if you've not accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, let the Son in, the Son of God in. Let him cleanse you. Let him shine his light through you. He stands waiting for you to return to him. That's who Jesus is. This is a time in this time of uh, land. It is a time of repentance. Like I said, it is a time of renewal also. So whatever it is that's been holding us back from a closer relationship with God, closer relationship with our family and friends, closer, closer relationship with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and offering um, forgiveness and reconciliation, I trust that you will allow the Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit who works in you to cleanse you. May the Lord bless this word unto your hearts and minds this day. Amen. 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 Come for a cleansing. <laughs> Do we have an uh, invitational hymn? So I hope this morning, if you're here and you have not accepted the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that you will not delay. You will know that he is the only one who can deliver you from whatever it is that is holding you back. Whatever things that you think that you cannot handle, that you that keep you from receiving him. He can transform all of those things. He wants you to come to him. So you're invited to come. Is there one today who will say, I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, the one who died for me, the one who can transform me so that I can transform, be used to transform shine light into other people's lives. Is there one today?
Uh, my name's Ward Williamson. I'm actually from Toronto. I've been in Halifax for 32 years. I've been uh, looking for Christ for 45 years. Um, I don't want to get too complicated here, but uh, I'm very happy I found this church. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen, Brother Ward. God bless you. <laughs> spark plug <laughs> um, and it's made me feel more at home in the city than anything I've found yet. Amen, amen, amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory presence and glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, henceforth, and even forevermore.